Assalamu alaikum. Greetings of peace. This is Sumaya Khalifa with the Islamic Speakers Bureau of Atlanta, welcoming you to another amazing Ramadan inspiration by Ustaz Zainab Ansari. Uh, we welcome you, Ustaz Zainab, and we look forward to hearing from you and be inspired by you today. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Good to see you, Sister Samaya. Mashallah, looking radiant. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm so excited to see all of you today on the 11th of Ramadan. And I have um, a couple of things I'd like to share with you, inshallah. So let me just do that. I'm going to be sharing a, um, a, a dua and a hadith. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, very good. So this is a, a hadith that I think most of you are probably familiar with, but I really wanted to emphasize it. Uh, this is a hadith that I mentioned last time, actually, that this is a month that the first part of which brings Allah's mercy, God's mercy, the middle of which brings his forgiveness. The last part brings emancipation from the fire. Now, granted, if there are any kind of hadith specialists out there, you might say, well, it's a little bit weak in its isnad, in its chain of transmission, but nonetheless, the meaning of the hadith is sound. And, you know, one of the things I want to encourage all of us to think about is, again, locating God's mercy and these things that we often don't really think about, we kind of take for granted, right? Obviously, you know, having uh, the routines that we had kind of outside of COVID-19, how that's all been changed, how we're now at home, but kind of being able to connect to time in a way that is perhaps more thoughtful, more intentional. So one of the things that's been so interesting to me is how quickly the days have gone by. Uh, my assumption was that, was, was that time would kind of like drag out, but it's really amazing that even with the interruption of our normal routine, how time has kind of gone by so quickly. And I'm trying to figure out how can I really maximize these days of, of benefit and spiritual benefit in Ramadan. So we've already passed that, that portion of the first 10 days. And it is my sincere dua supplication for all of you um, that God has bestowed his mercy on, on all of us. And now we are moving into those days of forgiveness, um, that second portion of Ramadan. And what's so interesting when we think about it, it's almost as if having passed those first 10 days, those, those days of mercy, that, that, that by God's mercy to us, you know, we've been acclimated. In other words, fasting is now part of our, our, our daily habit. And it's something that we are looking forward to that we're not so, you know, kind of like jolted by the hunger and thirst and that type of thing. However, the message here is that now that we've moved into that second portion of Ramadan, these are the days to really contemplate God's forgiveness and to really um, uh, not sort of rest on our kind of our own sort of intrinsic ability uh, to, to be strong and to fast, to understand that in these days of forgiveness, these are the days of us reaching out, um, beseeching God for his forgiveness and understanding that anything that we're able to do in terms of being able to have the health to fast, the stamina, the intellectual capacity to get why we fast, right? That all these blessings are always, these things always go back to, to Allah Ta'ala, to God the exalted. And that this is a moment to really, um, you know, kind of embrace the sense of both kind of awe for God's majesty and power and also a sense of um, understanding our own kind of humanity in a very humble way. And that's why I wanted to emphasize this idea of forgiveness um, and how our beloved prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and this is a human being that was again perfected, that even he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace be upon him, it was his habit, his practice to actually seek forgiveness um, of God up to 70 times uh, a day. So one of the things I like to encourage all of us to do you know, as we kind of move through these, that second set of 10 days of Ramadan into the mid portion and so on. Again, it's amazing how quickly time is, is passing by, uh, is to take time now to, to, to ask for God's forgiveness. And please understand that, that seeking forgiveness as a spiritual practice is not necessarily um, you know, because uh, one uh, has, has, has committed a sin or a misdeed, right? It's also a way of kind of softening the heart and hopefully preparing the heart for that, um, that, that kind of spiritual readiness and awareness that we want to have during the last portion of Ramadan, which I'm going to speak more about uh, next week. So I wanted to share with you all um, this hadith right here. 
And uh, this kind of supports the, the first hadith that I presented, right, in that where there might be some weakness in the chain of transmission um, of, uh, of that earlier hadith, that this one supports the idea, right, that there is a reward to be had uh, uh, during uh, Ramadan, that it's an opportunity indeed to have that, that forgiveness of past sins and so on. So I'm going to come back to this hadith, but I wanted to share with you all a really beautiful beautiful supplication. So again, let's kind of carve out those moments now during these, uh, this middle portion of Ramadan to seek forgiveness, to sit for a few minutes after each prayer and to, and to say astaghfirullah or I seek forgiveness of God um, or Rabbi ghfirli wa tub alayya. There are different things you can say, God, please forgive me and accept my repentance. Different things the beloved prophet, peace upon him, used to say. And here's one thing that I wanted to share. This was actually um, uh, the prophet, peace upon him, was in the mosque and overheard a man making the supplication and really uh, loved it and praised uh, the man for making this beautiful supplication from the heart. Ya hayu ya qayyum, by your mercy I seek help. So ya hayu ya qayyum, um, this is calling God uh, by his names of the ever living and the, the self is subsistent. By your mercy, I seek help. Rectify for me all of my affairs and do not leave me to depend on, on myself even for the blink of an eye. And that's the idea behind istighfar. It is this idea that we're not alone in this, right? As much as it might feel kind of lonely being in the house during Ramadan, that we're never alone. Um, and and we and and part of uh, uh, istighfar or seeking forgiveness is this idea that ultimately we don't want to be left to our own devices to figure any of this any of this out. This is about asking Allah Taala to choose for us. And again, istighfar is I think a really beautiful way of a, I think kind of reaching. Um, back, you know, into that humanity to be in that space of humility and asking God for his mercy, his forgiveness and his salvation uh, during this beautiful and blessed month of Ramadan. So that is my reflection that I wanted to share with you today. I pray it was a benefit and I look forward to seeing all of you next week. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all of you and accept. Amin ya Rabbi. Thank you so much, Ustaz and Zainab. This was just absolutely so beautiful. We thank you for joining us today and for sharing your beautiful insight and inspiration um, with all our viewers and ourselves. As a reminder, we thank you for being part of the ISB, for being uh, watching our videos on our YouTube channel. Please subscribe to it. And we also ask you, if you like our work, to please support us. Uh, we are at isbatlanta.org. Uh, this is Sumaya Khalifa with the Islamic Speakers Bureau of Atlanta. Thanking you again and thanking Ustaz Zainab. May you all have a very blessed Ramadan. May all the blessings be on all of us. And may we all uh, complete a beautiful Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum. Greetings of peace. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.